Hello, everybody. Welcome to the WMCQ in Chicago. The quarterfinals. We'll get that updated. It's not round nine anymore. But yeah. I'm Rashad Miller. And who are you? And I'm Ray Punzlan. GG's live. Let's do it. <laughs> and we're here joining Jeremy Stone on the left with Junk Rights and Brandon Nelson on the right with Naya Agro. Jeremy starts off with the Arbor Elf. Looking at Brandon's hand, he started off with a Flint Hoof, uh, Flint Hoof Boar. He had Boros Reckoner in there. Uh, Loxon and Smiter, so... Looks like a nice uh, starting hand for Brandon there. Now, if Jeremy pay, is paying a lot of attention, he, this this um this turn two play of a flint hoof four either means that that's all Jer, um, Brandon knows his only two drop, or he has a three drop that he wanna, really wants to follow it up with because flint hoof four is really a three drop. Yeah, it's really a three drop with haste, which means you want to play that guy after your two drop. And here goes Mulch. Mulch will. <laughs> grab a couple we'll cards. Draw three cards. Ancestral much. <laughs> and then put a Restoration Angel in the yard. Also a bonus. He just drew he just drew four cards off that mulch. It's not, not too bad. And I mean we say that because <sighs> Junk Rights has uh, unburial rights. Which yeah. like they re just return cards from the graveyard into the, onto the battlefield. So all those cards are gonna be used. Now does Jeremy how many cards does he have in his hand? He might be discarding now and he could play he has a Angel of Serenity in his hand. Doesn't have unburial rights or anything, but looks like he's deciding what to discard. Six lands in his hand, so probably one of the lands, unless he has a big fatty that he wants to put in the graveyard, but instead it's a um it's a land. Looks like a Godless Shrine. It's all right. Brandon draws for his turn, so let's see what he decides here. He has an option of Smiter or Boros Reckoner. I think does, he, I think he might just go with Smiter because Reckoner is a very interactive card, but the Junk Rights deck doesn't really like interact with creatures unless he just wants to get one damage in case a chump blocker jumps in the way. We'll see. It looks like but the forest it is about to lay down. It's going to be the Smiter for sure. There's there the it goes. The extra point of power is more relevant right now than the, the trickiness of the of the Boros Reckoner. <laughs> Jeremy draws a threat on his turn. Not sure if he has a play. He does have the option to uh, sever one of Brandon's creatures if you'd like. It looks like that might be the case. And, yep, pointed right at the Smiter. Smiters are going down. I mean, there was only one in play, <laughs> but if there were more, and they'd be out of there. Derby's not drawing uh, any of his things, any of his unbearable uh, rights or... Cards that make the deck a little more interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things you really want to get off of the mulches in, in, in the deck, but his mulch was, you know, actually just drew him a bunch of land instead of, you know, getting them to his creatures. Brandon decides to fight instead of uh, casting a creature for a turn. Plays Foundry, then passes it back. Well, I think he just wanted to not have to play the Sacred Foundry untapped, and he was able to use all of his mana with uh, the Domirat raid, and especially with uh, Jeremy. Well, Jer I would say with Jeremy only on three land, but he mulched into like three land a previous turn, and there's another mulch. Here's another mulch, putting down a Resurrection. He did it again. Trade he, three more this, lands. This mulch, his mulches do the exact same thing whenever <laughs> he does it. Three land and a Restoration Angel. Not seeing the burial rights he wants. He's not, <laughs> not so, seeing any fatties in the yard, that, but it's still a lot of a lot of cards. He's getting him deeper. Yeah, that just regardless. means he's getting closer and closer to the spells he really wants to cast. He's not in a lot of danger. He's at fourteen, and there's just a flint hoof board play. Um, Damri Ray doesn't actually threaten you. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, it, it can be a source of card advantage for you know the controller for Brandon Nelson, <laughs> but. Uh, it needs to have a lot of counters for it to actually do something to your life total. Yeah, no, Brandon, he just draws a Sun Petal Grow for his turn. He does have, going to activate his Planeswalker here. Let's see what he's... Uh, it, it wasn't a creature, unless we, unless he's really let next level. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a creature. But that was a quick peek. It. it was a really quick peek. Must have been a land. He didn't read it much. Thunderbolt Hellkite, and it will crash in for eight damage. Ooh, that is a lot of damage. Haste is the way to go. Yeah, Jeremy, he has Thragtus in his hand, but Thunderball Hellkite uh, doesn't care about that Thragtus. <laughs> well, I mean, the Thragtus will keep him alive. Yeah. It, def it brings him back up to 11. It allows him to block with, um, it allows him to block the Flint Hoof Boar. So he's just going to, if, if with this attack, it's just going to go down to six again. All right, and let's see. Well, he can play. I think it was a Gevity Township that Brandon drew. He could grow his guys and then 
fight the Thread Coast if you'd like. I don't know that that's really relevant. You know, growing your well, growing the the Thundermore Hellcat to a six is a little bit relevant because it makes it a two a two turn clock instead of a three turn clock. But then the boar could also f I mean, go through the token that was remaining after he fights. Fights a Thread Coast if he chooses to. Let's see what Brandon decides to do here. I think, I think he's going to go with your, your line because it seems pretty good. Now, another tricky thing you could do with, with uh, Dominic Raid and, uh, and a Boris Reckoner is play your own guy, like play your, your, your Reckoner and have Dami Raid make your two creatures fight and then just dome them for, for, for a bunch for of damage. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a dome for five. All right. So it looks like uh, Brandon's just setting that up for next turn because he's going to attack for six. That's going to bring um, Jeremy Dow to five, which means that um, the activation from... Oh, I guess he's not going to save the Domri. So we're not going to go with that. We're just going to go with the, the original plan he had. Yeah, no, he's... Uh, let's see, is Jeremy going to block here? He'll go down to one. He only has five land. Let's see. He does have Lingering Souls in his deck, so there's an option there, but... I feel like the value you're going to get out of that 3-3 three, three is not greater than the life that you can, that you can save. Because right now that 3-3 three, three is never, it's not really going to be the way you win the game. And, it's, and right now it's just, it's just as effect, it's just like a lingering souls token. It's just a guy that's there to save someone. <laughs> I like how Jeremy shows the lands and shows Raiders lands probably like, I, I saw those. Yeah, I saw I, those. I saw all those lands already. <laughs> you drew six of them this game. I remember. So looking at the sideboards, we have, let's see, Jeremy here. His boards have some acidic signs, sin collector, fiend hunter, voice of resurgence, ray of revelation, and replicate another sever the bloodline. Um, what do we have? And we'll pull up Brandon's sideboard. Well, his sideboard is um, event, advent of the worm, ground seal, ray of Rev Rev revelation, bonfire, uh, similar lesions, pillars, unflinching curse, thrak tusk, and oblivion ring. So, those ground seals? <laughs> well, those two ground seals are definitely coming in. Um, his other cards are really for a real, a more controlling matchup. I don't see a big reason for, say, you know, like Advent of the Worm. That's more of a post Wrath of God or yeah. post, um, post uh, Supreme Verdict play, just so you have, you know, the um, <clears throat> the pressure. You can put the pressure back on after the Supreme Verdict hits the board. Uh, Some of the Legions is more of a grindy card. I don't know that this is uh, a grinding. Um, matchup and those deck names are reversed, but I'm sure that um, our judge on the scene will reverse the, will fix the deck names. But um, yeah, I think it's just the ground seals. This doesn't seem like a pretty bad matchup, although, although this game wasn't really in the um, the optimal um, junk rights game that was played. Yeah, he uh, just didn't hit any of the action spells that he really wanted, like unburial rights, like. Um, well, yeah, he like just unburial yeah, rights. Yeah, unburial rights, big one. Yeah. Getting even if he hit him unburial rights, he didn't really have anything in his yard other than the restoration angel. So that was kind of rough, and Brandon really did slow that killing that uh, pilgrim early on. Really slowed Jeremy down. Yeah, it slowed, him, it slowed him down by a turn. He he yeah. got to the point where he had he would have had seven mana, I believe, instead of six. Yeah, which meant that. Um, Angel, angel Serenity. Serenity. Angel Serenity definitely brings him back in that game, mm -hmm. as it always does in every game that an Angel Serenity <laughs> the battlefield. It just when it it takes you from losing to at least not losing. At least you're not losing that game anymore. So I mean, th there's a couple of Pillar of Flame also that um, Brandon Nelson could bring in if he really wants to to target those mana those mana elves because it's not just. It's not just um, Arbyoff. There's probably also there's also um, Avacyn's Pilgrims uh -huh. in the deck too. So there's plenty of targets for like a pillar of flames. Uh, Jeremy looks like he's getting rid of his Obsidus, his Restoration Angels, a Mulch, his Garuk. So he's getting rid of those and then see what he decided to bring in. Uh, I'm seeing maybe the Fiend Hunters, Sever the Bloodline, some of the options that Jeremy might bring in, along with Voice Resurgence and. Abrupt the case. I probably may. So it looked like if you missed that there, Jeremy looks like he's bringing in Fiend Hunter's voice resurgence, abrupt the case, and the Severed Bloodline. And he took out his Garuk, his Obsidats, his Restoration Angels, and I believe there was one Mulch in there as well. That I mean, that's a big, that's a large amount of cards to bring in for a matchup. So I think that um, 
He's probably played this matchup at least once today. I don't know. Maybe they've even played before. But um, he doesn't think it's a good one because there's a lot of he brought in a lot of cards. Unless yeah. there's just a bunch of cards in his main deck that just don't interact with you know all creature deck. And I don't. And it's hard to have cards in your in your deck that don't do that, especially when you're playing Magic. All your cards should either be like they're <laughs> gonna be creatures or they're gonna interact with creatures or you're just this you know fish quote-unquote fishbowl combo deck which doesn't really exist in this format so i don't know i guess he has to and this isn't the fastest deck out there no definitely this, not. this is almost this is pretty mid-range as you can see our judge decided that that this was a um and now mid -range. Yeah, it was a mid-range deck it definitely has a curve it has a, it, it stays pretty low on the curve also but he has a couple copies of Experiment One, I believe we saw. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah he's not he's not yeah. four of as far as um the uh like the lower card the lower curve cards uh -huh. go. Um it's just it's just mana dudes and then a couple of uh experiment ones just so he has something else to do on turn one. And the experiment one's a pretty sweet thing to do on the first turn of the game. Yeah, those experiment one I've seen a lot get out of hand and See him su uh, survive Supreme Verdicts is pretty sweet as well, yeah. <laughs> and he's coming back. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he just he never went anywhere. <laughs> Forget about coming back. That guy, yeah, just, regrowing, he's just, regrowing. He's just here to stay. <laughs> he'll turn, he'll turn sideways to attack you. He'll turn sideways to to regenerate from his Supreme Verdict. But that guy is just gonna be around. All right, so here we go. We're presenting our decks. Let's see if Jeremy still can uh, turn things around for game two. Yeah, Jeremy's going to need a quick start, and hopefully his game plan, the typical rights game plan, falls into place for him if he's looking to win this game. Yeah, wait, you know, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, yeah go. just but going like as slow as he did that other game, just playing Thrag to us and not doing anything special, definitely is not what he wants to be doing in this matchup at all. Yeah, I mean, when, when the junk rights deck actually does his thing and gets going, it's actually a beautiful thing to see. It's... I mean, turn, you can get a turn three, whatever you want. Yeah. With, Angel Serenity yeah, is three, pretty awesome. Yeah, turn three, <laughs> Angel Serenity, turn three, I don't know what other fatties he's assigned to play, but let, let's just see what we can actually muster up on Jeremy's side. Uh, and he goes voice, turn of voice of Resurgence. Voice just, it's just awesome against everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> probably not exactly what, oh, Ooh, you know what's awesome flip? against Voice of Resurgence? Pillar of Flames. Pillar of Flames. And I don't think uh, Brandon has that many Pillar of Flames. Well, he only has two, two out of his sideboard, but they definitely came in. And and this is the turns that he wants to see as Pillar of Flames. Turns one and turns two. All right. So Grizzly Salvage. Just got to mm -hmm. give him the choice of a Voice of Resurgence, a Land, an Elf, a Angel Serenity. And he can't choose the, gri the other Grizzly Salvage. So not too bad. Um, I'm guessing you go for the Voice right here unless he's Land Light and you could go for the Arbor Elf. I'm looking, I'm trying to see his hand. I see at least one forest. Forest into yeah. Arbelf is... Uh, that could be great. And then he has a threat that's coming up as well. So Yeah, but maybe uh, Jeremy's a little bit concerned. He just saw a Pillar of Flames. He doesn't know how many Pillar of Flames Brandon's packing. So, and, and I've definitely been on the end of burn your elf situations. <laughs> and they just don't feel good, especially when you're really relying on them to be your source of mana. Brandon's hand turn. is Experiment 1, Ground Seal, Boros Reckoner. And two copies of his planer's walker. So, so what did he end up there? Uh, the, isol the isolated chapel. All right. So decided to go to isolated chapel, fearing that there might be more pillar of flames from Brandon. Well, the arbor elf doesn't exactly wrap him into something immediately. It gets him to it gets him to four that turn, and then you know he plays. Uh, if he gets another land, he's at five. But there's nothing really he would be able to do with that four mana on the previous turn. And he's gonna, and he still has the same four mana that he would have had, except now he doesn't have an elf that could die. All right, he draws an arbor elf for his turn. So right now we're looking at Jeremy's hand of two Thragtus, Severed of Bloodline, and uh, Angel of Serenity. Let's see what Brandon has in store for this turn. Well, it looks like he has a ground seal. Is too. that three copies of his Planeswalker in his Yeah, he does have three Dominic. Three in his copies. <laughs> We're not playing with the new um, Legend slash Planeswalkers rules yet. <laughs> so, um, not the best thing in the world to have three of copies of a Legendary or Planeswalker card. 
All right. Square man one probably not going to get any bigger, and there's a growl seal going to draw my card, and it's going to turn off of it's going to turn off Jeremy's um, um, barrier rights if he ever sees one. All right, Brandon draws a land off that. Jeremy's got to be pretty happy with how things are going right now. Brandon has a grown his experiment one is just a ground seal on the board there. Now he's able to play his thrag tusk. Gonna Thrag's jump up to twenty four. Yep. <laughs> Five life, five mana, five three. And experiment one, they can't do anything against it now. <laughs> well, he's going to hang around just in case things get better for him. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be a Domri raid. Oh, no, oh, there's a Boros Reckoner. Reckoner. Specifically designed to deal with Thrak Tusk. Did you know that? Was it real? I, I did not know that. Yeah, it was one of those cards that was designed to help um, the aggro decks. Um, have some way to interact with the Thrag Tusk um, profitably. Here's five mana, and we're going to see another Thrag Tusk. Now, it doesn't stop the, the player from, you know, gaining five <laughs> slash ten life, but it does allow Brandon to attack through, you know, the Thrag Tusk without fear of, you know, just trading <coughs> away and there, and there being a 3-3 three, three left over. So right now, Brandon drew the fourth <laughs> copy of his Planeswalker with two Thunderball Hellkites in his hand as well. <laughs> probably mentioning that. Probably not specifically. But uh, so Domri is going to come down. He might want to fight. He's going to fight um, the elf and kill off both elves with the, the trigger. Bur yep, from Boros Reckoner. And one more fight. Like, one fight from a, a Boros Reckoner is just going to kill two creatures. He could kill both of those Thraktos, which will leave behind two 3-3 three, three tokens. But he does have that option next turn, especially if this Domri goes down. And I have to imagine if a Thraktos attacks a Dom, this Domri raid, uh, Brandon isn't blocking. Yep, there's a severed bloodline. Comes crashing in for... Oh, both of them are going to be yep. attacking. Yeah, he's not blocking. He's... he's He's trying to, you know, he's looking at these three <laughs> other Domi raids in his hand like he's, like he's considering, you know. Yeah, no chance on blocking. Yeah. It's like, I need to play these other ones. Here we go again. Draw stuff. <laughs> There's a mountain, so we have options again. We have. Um, Thunder Mountain Holokai is one. <laughs> yep. The other option is play another Domri, which doesn't really do a lot, so the Thunder is going to come down, make the Sir Bearman on a 3-3. A three -three. All right, and no, at no attacks from uh, for the experiment one. So Jeremy's just one away from playing his uh, Angel of Serenity. So there's attack for ten, so he does block, and he doesn't regenerate. That's interesting. Yeah, just wants to get rid of the so Thraktus. Yeah, he wants to get rid of one of the Thraktus. So I leave a three three. And let's see, Jeremy can play that Angel Serenity if he chooses to. Does he have another land? He does have that. He has a forest in his hand. So he has a forest and he can. So he does have seven. Um, it's possible that um, he's waiting for some to get more value out of that angel. Yeah. Because right now the angel can only target uh, creatures on the battlefield. Because ground seal is going to stop it from bringing anything back from his graveyard, so he would only be able to remove, you know, the um, the Thunder My Hill Kite, possibly his Thrak Tusk if he wanted to get a three three and gain five life later. But he wants, I think, he just wants to get rid of multiple creatures, multiple threats that Brandon Nelson has. Because right now he's only taken five. He's going to and he's attacking back for eight. If uh, Brandon wants to race, Brandon doesn't win that race. So. Jeremy's in the driver's seat. He can he can just attack freely with his Thrak Tusk um, and, you know, present the trade. And if Brandon actually decides to do that, then he's way ahead. And if he doesn't, he has to just keep taking five. Yeah, now, Brandon is thinking that he would add another Thunder Mahal Kite. Oh, but looks like he's not going to go that route. He's going to play another Planeswalker. Figure out some math here. He has a land. He's probably going to play in a land, and the only thing he can really do, he can, well, he has the option of playing a tail kite and attack for 10, and he's doing the math to see if he can win this race. So 10, 10, 10 is three attacks, and 8, 8 is two attacks. So he wouldn't win that race. So the consideration is maybe play the hell kite now 
and then next turn play the Domri and fight. And oh, it looks like he will play both Hellkites and come in. So Brandon, oh. maybe maybe he was trying to figure out if there was an Angel of Serenity in Jeremy's hand before he played this uh, and decided that he didn't believe Jeremy had the Angel of Serenity. I guess the, the thought was if he had the Angel, he would have played it, which means that Jeremy's going to get a lot of value out of this. Yeah, he's going to be crashing in for lots of damage. Yeah, because, because not only... Um, did he, you know, is now now he's getting two creatures from his Angel of Serenity. Oh, he's just going to flash back to Sever instead, which oh, does it. Which is even better. That is, that is even because he still has an Angel. But uh, I was just going to say that uh, Hellkite attacks through Angel of Serenity at least the first time. So banking your defense on an Angel of Serenity doesn't always, you know, pay when your opponent's playing Thunder My Hellkite. Another Damry? See if Domri gets anything in. And Boom. there's a Boros Reckoner, which is one of the one of the combos. Boros Reckoner and Domri Raid. Best buddies. Let's see what Brandon decides here. Now, I don't think he laid a land this turn. Oh, but he does he even have a land? I don't think he has a land. But he does have, uh, he's just, oh, oh he, he does, does have a land. Stopping ground? He's going to have to pay two life to lay that. That's going to put him down to seven. But he at least has a 3-3 three, three first striker. But this Angel Serenity, which, you know, the way that the way that he played, he played like he just didn't have it, even though one of those plays was obvious. Sever the bloodline in my graveyard on your two Thunder My Hell Kaiser in play. But yeah. sometimes you don't see the cards in the graveyard. I didn't look. Well, Brandon could also have been thinking, maybe he did think about it, and he's like, does he have the seventh land? We know that Jeremy was holding back the seventh land that he could play last turn, and... Mm -hmm. He decided that Jeremy didn't have it, and he'd go for it instead. But unfortunately, he did, and <laughs> lost both of his Hellkites. His other option there was just playing his uh, Domery, maybe taking out a token or digging in deeper, but looks like Brandon did a little math there and decided that was a, a better plan of attack for him. Yeah. Now, we actually have um, we have a, an update from the other some of the other games. I guess just one of the other games in the top eight. Uh, Daniel Cicchetti was playing against Brian Upham one, I believe it was that was pretty quick, so it might have been two zero. Could be a two one. But um Daniel's moving on and this is the end for Brian Upham. Not the end of his magic career, but at least it's the end of his <laughs> dreams of, of traveling to Amsterdam to represent Team USA. Is this the last World Magic Cup qualifier for? Yeah, this yeah. is it. The rest of the team has already been um, decided for I think most for I looked at the list. I looked at because I looked at the W the MCQ website, and all of the teams have three members. I think today, all of the qualifiers is that how it works? All of the qualifiers work happen on one day. It sounds like Paulo was, uh, yeah, he was he was on Twitter talking about uh, some of the WMCQ stuff, and um, he was in the top eight, but he lost in the quarterfinals. Now. Our team right now is um, player of the year, which is uh, Josh Other Layton. He won because he has the most pro points. points. Um, and we have Joe Spain, Spanier, who is also known as Found Omega on Magic Online, or at Found Omega if you want to follow him on Twitter. Um, our other. WMCQ winner so far is... You remember it. It's in your head somewhere. It is. I sent <laughs> a tweet out earlier today. Your mouse is on the screen. It was over here. No, you got, you're good. Um, the other... I'm trying to remember before... <laughs> before he... <laughs> before uh, Leslie could look it up for you. Yeah. I, do, I, I can't think of the, th the third one right now. It, it's Josh Adelayton, Joe Spanier, um... The chat's probably blowing up. It's telling yeah. us right now. Let's see who's faster. <laughs> just go look at my. Just look at Gigi's last tweets, or you can look. Just look at. Just go click tweets. Click the word tweets. You're welcome. And feed me the information, like so I can pretend like I remembered. Oh, Jason Golvich. 
he won the the DC uh, WMCQ qualifier. And right now, um, we know that one of these players has a shot at joining the team and representing the USA in um, Amsterdam, which is where the World Players Champ, the World Magic Cup, and the um, mat the Players Championship, the Magic Player Ch Championship is happening. Yeah, last year we had it out in Indianapolis, right? In well, Jet it happened in two different places. Um, the, the the World Magic Cup, yes, the World, World Magic, Magic Cup, Cup happened at Gen Con. And the the uh, the players championship happened out in Seattle uh, during PAX weekend, and now they're both combined in um, in Amsterdam. So that's gonna be sweet. Going yeah, and this year the World Magic Cup has a couple modifications from it from last year, right? I don't remember. I didn't. I, I, I didn't believe look like at it too too intently. If I remember reading, I think there's uh, more people playing day two, or your fourth player. The fourth player isn't like. Just leave it left hanging. I Maybe. forget exactly how it is. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's possible that the format's changed. A I, little I bit. I do remember some um, some information coming from um, Helen, where uh, there were changes made because of things like that. Yeah. The fourth player just being left out, and I think the, there's some changes that allow for awesome things for that player to do instead yeah. of just kind of do nothing. All right, and. Uh, if you've been paying attention, I'm shuffling up there. Jeremy is going down to six right now. We got we got another update. Adrian Sullivan did win in, in the matchup that he thought was good. Sounds like it was a good matchup because he beat uh, Shane Severs. So he moves on to the quarterfinals. He's going to play the winner of this match, All actually. Right. So it's two different decks. He's going to play a different deck than he just played. There is another, there are three Ben Oris um, decks in this, in this top eight. So, and I believe one of them lost um, last round. Oh, no, it won. Daniel Cicchetti was actually playing Ben Oris. So, one of them moves on, but uh, let's go back to this matchup. Yeah, Jer Jeremy keeps, uh, his hand was Grizzly Salvage, Voice, and uh, a couple lands. Brandon... Looks like he has an Epson program in his hand. Burroughs. I can't make out the rest of his hand right now, but he's going to lead off with the Epson program. Is that a rootbound crack? That's a rootbound crack. Still <laughs> putzing around the early game, both of these players trying to get their mana. <laughs> trying to get their mana perfect. Uh, doesn't look like Brandon has a lot of action in his hand. He has a, as, as we see, a voice of resurgence hit the battlefield. But. Yeah, beyond that, it's just another Grizzly Salvage and a bunch of land. In yeah, I mean, th there's a ground seal just to make sure that, that that angle of attack is gone for Jeremy. But none of the, none of the early plays for, for Brandon. It looks like he is, he is firmly planted on winning this game in the mid-range. Ground seal for Brandon. That looks like Pillar of Flame after that. Going to get rid of the voice. And then Sacred Foundry comes into play. These pillars are actually doing a lot of work. Um, you know, I was just thinking, you know, being able to tag a, a mana elf here and there would be awesome. But um, just <laughs> being able to not have to deal with voice of resurgence. It's just voice. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> this guy is kind of, voice. That's huge. Yeah, he <laughs> is not resurging anything. This guy is just voice, and we shut him up. <laughs> Pillar of Flame, be quiet. Now, Jeremy here, Drew Fiend Hunter, looks like he might be thinking if he wants to feed Hunter the Evans' Pilgrim, he also has the other option of just playing his Grizzly Salvage, but we'll see what he decides to do here. And it looks like, yep, Fiend Hunter is the Evans' Pilgrim. I mean, it's it's not a bad thing to do. Uh, Fane Hunter isn't going to have a lot of awesome targets. Um, I mean, the creatures that are in Brandon's hand have awesome abilities like Flash and Haste. So it's either you take the damage from it the first time, or you know you get some value out of it by getting the, Al the Avacyn's Pilgrim and just slowing him, Brandon, down, even if you fly a little bit. The Grizzly Salvage. So I wonder if uh, Jeremy is going to play around the, this a potential Restoration Angel from Brandon's end there. I have to imagine that he knows that he has it, but although he didn't see any in any of the, in, any of the other two games. 
acidic slime is going to be taken after that grizzly salvage. It's a lot on the line. These guys are taking their time, making sure they even even your land drop needs to be the right land drop, especially with the way that all these lands have um, all these criteria as to you know how they can come into play tapped or untapped. Yeah, and Derby doesn't attack, so Brandon uh, will be just play the restoration. He joined the turn to get ahead. Looks like he drew away Thunderbolt Hellkite. So now he has the Thunderbolt Hellkite crash in for eight damage. Jeremy's in trouble here with look the way. His hand is coming about. It's not looking lo too good for Jeremy. Grizzly Salvage end of turn. And let's see what he decides here. He has the option of Restoration Angel, Fiend Hunter, um, Arbor Elf, Isolated Chapel. Can't take that Erupt, okay? We'll it take looks like the uh, Restoration Angel. He needs to fight back. There, there's a flying army over on Brandon Nelson's side, and that's the only card that really interacts with it. So sometimes you just have to stay at four mana and you know play the game as fair as possible, just so that you don't die to Thundermaw Hail Kites and your your opponent's Restoration Angels. All right, so. Looks like he'll just play out the Restoration Angel. Not even being tricky about yep. it. Flicker, the Fiend Hunter, and he the Fiend Hunter will get rid of the Thunderbolt Hellkite now. Yeah, he does get to upgrade his, the target on his Fiend Hunter, which I didn't consider, but now it's like things aren't looking bad for, for Jeremy now. That one Restoration Angel basically neutralized the board. We had a stalemate, and both these players, like one of these players needs to do something. Brandon soon. does have a Silencia Charm in his hand. Oh, but he has. Oh, he does have that one white mana right there. Flintoff Moor, Sun Petal Grove, and the Charm. No, I don't know that there's a lot of targets for a Celestia Charm other than Angel Serenity, but that's a pretty good target. I know that he. If, We're just um, pumping. Get, <laughs> get. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean pumping's fine. Even making a two two's fine. So Flintoff Moor is going to come down. But it looks like just wants to force through some damage. Making it look like, making he's trying to make it look that way, but definitely trying to find a way to best use his charm. Well, if we're going to force through damage, why not also, yeah, what are we concerned about the Avacyn's Pilgrim? Um, All right. Tricky, tricky, that Celestia charm. Sometimes it is just a giant growth. And Jeremy's sitting at seven. He has acidic slime in his hand. Not sure if he has any other defenses for the Restoration Angel. There's acidic slime. Probably just oh, it gets rid of the ground seal. All right, so didn't catch what Brandon drew for the turn. Yeah, I'm not sure. I had to fix the microphone. I had a cable that got unplugged. But well, we got this sweet attack that's about to happen. Everyone crashing in. I mean, do you just keep running this attack and and making Jeremy fear Celestia charms? Just keep doing it. Well, Jeremy has no choice but to block. Yeah, I guess he's at seven. He's so low life right now. But he's gonna take three. That's gonna bring him down to four. And like Sundown Smiter is very good at dealing four damage. <laughs> All right, seventh land. There's the Angel of Serenity. That's really going to bring it back. 
turn the ties over back to Jeremy. No, I don't he, know if Brandon. He just, he just fans his fingers out at at Brandon's board. He's like, "Yeah, get those out of here." <laughs> oh, and the bonfire for four off the top, and Brandon takes the match right there when it was looking real rough. Brandon's I, able to take it off on the bonfire for four I, right I off the top. I was wondering if bonfire was you know a card that comes <laughs> in. I think you know, maybe not, but <laughs> it ended up. That, the game. that one point that was squeezed through that Everson Pilgrim, that one turn where he sent everyone in, was key to uh, be able to finish him off right there. Well, congratulations to Brandon. He'll be in Bensi. Now, we were planning on moving another match over. I don't know if they're playing or not. So the, right now they're flipping things over. Um, <laughs> so we're going to come back. <laughs> But we're gonna we're gonna send a shot to the booth really fast while they do that so that you don't see that black screen that I was trying to avoid people seeing. All right, so right now uh, we're we're getting the other match up moved over. Which match is it again, Rusty? It's it's is it Willie or is it Wiley? It's spelled. W Y L I E. We should probably so, ask her to make sure um, how he actually pronounce his name. So Wiley and uh, but, but Wiley's opponent. playing against Casey Hanford, and Casey, Casey Hanford's deck is right here, and he's playing the he's playing the Aristocrats Aristocrat Act Two with Blasphemous Act. Yeah, that? with Bra with Blasphemous Act, and he's playing against um, Bant Auras. Or or okay, so it's Wiley, like the coyote. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, and thanks, Rusty. <laughs> Wiley is going to be pulling the bent or Okay, so it looks like we got it looks like we got some magic going on down there. So we're going to go back down there. The, the names aren't right yet. The 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 deck the decks aren't right just yet. Um, but we're joining actually, game three. And it's not looking good for Casey. Just the way how things are going right now. We have guys of Saint Trap with uh, armor on it. Invisible stalker sitting there, and I'm not sure what those two face up cards in front of Casey are are right now. Like what the what are the deal with those two cards? It looks like the casual, you saw my hand with Sin Collector, maybe. All right, that could be. Is that a Sin Collector or is that a Cartel Aristocrat? I think that's a Cartel Aristocrat. I don't know what they are. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't know what it could be. Is he just revealing his hand and showing, look at this sweet hand? <laughs> Sometimes you just have all these and you want to show them off. Not sure who's thinking right now. Okay, I think we got the names right. The life totals might not be right just yet, but... Not sure exactly what's going on. It might be Casey. He just tapped three mana and is deciding if he wants to go with his Lingering Souls or Liliana the Veil. I still want to know what's going on with the <laughs> Bat Voltron. Okay. <laughs> I want to know why these two... I want to know why these two creatures are face up. Is it because they were waiting for us? <laughs> maybe they're in. Maybe that's his part of his battlefield. Is that his graveyard? What are those two cards? It's a voice in a Abyssin program. Well, no, I know what they are. <laughs> I just need to know what's going on. No, they just want to know what they were. <laughs> oh, he just has his graveyard right in front of him. So that's his graveyard, and the the Cavern of Souls is on Vampire, and Blood Artist is a Vampire. So we got Doom Traveler and the Blood Artist. All right, Wiley just comes in with his team. So here, Casey's going to end up taking five after this exchange here. Yeah, 
token goes away and it's like hey get that token out of there don't forget now does blood i can't remember does blood eye just trigger when any creature goes to the graveyard or just your that i can't remember exactly the wording of that now now that you bring it up i thought it was any but i forget I if think it, it might be any i remember blood artists like putting a blood artist in play and then just swinging with all your dudes and just having what? having a good old time <laughs> So Casey plays, oh, Liliana in the Veil. And Wiley goes and sacks the Invisible Stalker. Just just moves the Invisible Stalker to his other and plays on. <laughs> That's his graveyard, everybody. Can, can we? I don't know. I guess it's fine. If both players are fine with the graveyard being right there, then. Weird place to put the graveyard. You could easily get things. Things can get up. a little confused. All right, so Wiley in the tank now. Not sure what's in Wiley's hand that he's trying to consider here. Well, it's probably a creature or an enchantment. He just uh, did he? Oh, I'm like, did he just, <laughs> that's his token pile. Okay, I'm like, <laughs> did he just like pill from the top of his deck and put it in? <laughs> he's like, and put it into play. <laughs> Looks like there's a little lag to that angel coming to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm not sure. Yeah. All right, so the angel just gets blocked by a 1 1 token. And Casey Blood Artist. Take three. Yeah, Blood Artist is going to get him again. It must only be your creatures. Can can you check, Rusty? Blood is Blood Artist only your creatures when they go to the graveyard? The angel token just removes itself, though. Is it? Oh, I does it not go to the graveyard? Yeah, does it exile? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I seems to be some confusion right now. No, it's my graveyard. Guys, one, back up. Two, do not talk. <laughs> Are the players actually playing? Is there some problem? I think he's. Are they just really thinking, thinking really hard? Okay, looks like the. Okay, looks like the judge is um, intervening. So we'll just wait to see what. Oh no, we just had a pass of the turn. All right, so Casey looks like he drew a clifftop retreat for his turn, and he's gonna play double lingering souls. Lingering Souls, Flashback, Hardcast, and Flashback, or just just casted. Now this this is really similar to um, the plan that Adrian Sullivan has with his um, Esper deck, where Lingering Souls just ends up getting in the way and mucking up the board, and there's not a lot that the the bat deck can do because it's only attacking with one creature. If you if you add on the fact that there's a Blood Artist on on, on the board, all these blocks turn into you know. Plus one life for Casey, which is going to get him back into the game. And, you know, eventually you can start killing um, Wiley. Let's see. Wiley, not sure what he picked up this turn, but that Liliana is going to be able to get rid of that Geist if he doesn't add anything to the board. Plays well, another armor. So it looks like Casey's going to be blocking both. I mean, these. These attacks are kind of fruitless. Well, there's a root bound defense, and Wiley looks like he does that just so he could get the yeah. token to protect himself from Liliana's ability. Yeah, this is definitely so that um, he gets another 4-4 four -four under the battlefield. All right, so there's the uh, the untapped token is going to represent the root mound defense. All right. Let's see, Casey's. Did he pass the turn? Is there any discussion going on? They're like they look frozen in time right now. These guys have been playing very thoroughly. I mean, they're pretty close to, you know, a trip to, to Amsterdam. You know, they still have two more rounds. 
it's, it's a yeah, winning trip, a, but yeah, but it's within reach right yeah, now. Yeah, this this is definitely this counts as being very close. Oh, so he's coming in with the two tokens. What? I could see that. I think that Casey may have drawn a tragic slip. And maybe that's what he's trying to do here. He blocks with the angel, then he will tragic slip away the angel, and then Liliana the veil, the geist, but. Well, while he's just going to take the damage and well, he must have he, he had to have drawn something that can get rid of or another lingering soul. So he just plans on blocking. No, I think much. it had to be tragic slip. That's the only thing that makes sense right there. The tragic slip doesn't do anything right but now. But if you if you block the token, yeah, if yeah. you block, that's I mean so now you, yeah now Casey's stuck here. You you don't you don't risk taking ten damage on a backswing on the hopes that that he blocks or does he? <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out what his plan was. I mean, it made more sense maybe if KC tried to bait him with one token. He had one blocker back instead of lots of damage coming through. All right, so not clear what's going on right now. And all right, KC passes the turn. Maybe Devour Flesh? No, if he has Devour, you would have played right, right there. It has to be Tragic Slip that Casey's just trying to set up, and Wiley didn't take the bait. I'm looking at all the cards on this deck list. I can't find out what card it could be. Other than Tragic Slip? <laughs> I don't see what Tragic Slip even does. Let's see here. So Casey's going to block with Blood Artist now. I take four from the angel. I guess the plan was you can't go on chump blocking forever and just to try to win the just uh, try to win somehow. I really think Casey was just trying to bait Wiley to in blocking and hoping that he would be able to use a tragic slip and Liliana to clear the board. Well let's see if we can get a good any type of look at the card that's left in Casey's hand. All right. Let's see, does Wiley have any follow-up? Invisible stalker. All right. So Casey takes a peek, passes the turn. Casey's sitting only at eight life right now. I'm so curious. What is that card? What's in Casey's hand? All right. Attack. There's the obvious chumps. Chump box. <clears throat> Casey's going to take one. It's going to go down to seven, but he's in terrible shape. A Blasphemous Act. Is there enough mana to cast that? That's tough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There is enough mana. Well, the token's going to go away, so I think he'll be sure. Oh, so it'll be eight. So he would need either one more creature or one more land. Passes a turn. Draws a Liliana. Yeah, and there was a tragic slip in his hand. His hand right now is cliffed up retreat. Liliana tragic slip. Yeah, I don't know. I would you could get the exact same value from that tragic slip by um by just blocking. And just waiting a turn. But well, Liliana. If he wanted to use the Liliana in his turn and hope that he could get guys. <laughs> And this is just going to be over right now. But it's not over. I think that... And oh, it is over. All right. There it goes. Well, congratulations to Wiley. He'll advance. And I think Casey's telling him his plan. He was hoping a block of the angel right there so he could tragic slip that and then Liliana away to Geist. But yeah. Wiley was not going to fall for that. <laughs> he, took a, he took a really big risk there with, with that being a plan. Uh, I, I like being more patient. Just, you know, blocking enough to stay alive, see some more draw steps. There's some really big and powerful spells in Casey's deck, um, like Blasphemous Act and um, like even the opposite that in, in conjunction with the life gain from that Blood Artist could probably keep them in the game. But with that match, I, it's our semifinal set now? Yeah, our, our 